of the best is coming from this assembly. Amen. Multi billionaires from this assembly. I mean, you can imagine what God has done moving you and I from a place like this and the other side to a, to a mega altar like this. It's a hand of God. And God so made it that funds came from this same assembly. The time has come in this land. You will become a major force. The kings will count it the privilege to receive an autograph from you. It is my joy. Some call him Papa. Some call him Daddy. Some call him Father. Some call him Apostle. Some call him Prophet. Some don't have a name to describe. It is my honor and my privilege to bring God's channel, the senior pastor of the shepherd's house, the man of God that has less generous in the kingdom. Yes. 
again and again in Jesus name Amen. take your seat in the heavenly places Psalm 112 and verse number 5 and true meant for greatness Psalm 112 and verse number 5 for there are sets of thrones of judgment the thrones of the house of David Psalm 122 and verse number 5 Jesus is called the son of David, the root of Jesse. He came to establish a spiritual house of David, a family of God, a family of kings ruling under God. That is why Jesus is called the king of kings. There are other kings and he is the king. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Revelation chapter 19 number 6 There are thrones in the families of God And one of those thrones Have been given to you Amen. Did you hear this? I said they have been given to you Amen. Revelation 1 verse 5 He has made unto us king And priest unto our God And we shall rule on the earth Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5 he has made us and for Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead the prince of the kings of the earth and unto him that loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood and verse number 6 and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father 
to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And then Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 9 to 10 also establish that he has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. God did not save you to leave you alone. And the song is song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereon for thou slain thou that was slain and thou hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, out of every tongue and people and nations. And then verse 10 has made us unto our God kings and prince and we shall reign in heaven. After rapture. When are we to reign? Tell your neighbor I'm taking my place on earth. Shout it loud as I'm taking my place on earth. And in Job 36, I'm laying some foundation, very crucial. Job 36 and verse 5, hear me, he has set on high thrones for his children. Job 36 and verse 5 and verse 7, there is nothing that can disqualify your place as a king. I came tonight to enthrone somebody. And the Bible says, God does not despise any. He does not despise you. Behold, God is mighty and despises not any. He is mighty. He will not despise you. And when God does not despise you, no mortal man has the privilege to despise you. You are too loaded. You must be needed. You are too saturated. You must be announced. You are too surrounded. You must never surrender. You are too protected and defended to be arrested. Who am I talking to tonight? No power can disqualify you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says he does not despise any. And then verse 7 he says he has given us sets of thrones. Set of thrones. For he withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous. But with kings a day on the thrones. So he is ruling with us as kings on the thrones. Yeah, he does establish them forever and they are exalted. Lift up your hand and say, I am exalted. I can never be on the floor. Let me hear you say that. Hear me, as a king, you are in charge of circumstances. As a king, you are in charge of every situation. Hear me, as a king, you are supposed to be indestructible. By virtue of your predestination, by virtue of your ordination, by virtue of your impartation, hear me, child of God, and by virtue of your longevity. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. By virtue of your predestination, your ordination, your impartation, and longevity. Because every king that are enthroned by God are carriers of this divine apparatus. That means your enthronement has been predestinated. Before you arrive, your destiny has already been initiated. Your future has already been crafted. You have been designed before you were released. If you were not needed, you will not be created. And if you were created because you were needed, you cannot be wasted. You are born loaded. There is no vacant human being. Every human being is born seated. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. An example of a loaded man is David. Am I talking to somebody here? David was too loaded to be isolated. One David, but he was a king. He was a priest. He was a song composer. He was a singer. He was an instrumentalist. He was a human developer. He was a consultant. He was a poet writer. He was he's, he's, he's a giant killer. He's a commander. He's a general. If you stop him from being a king, he will be a priest. If you close the door of being a priest, he will be a singer. If you stop him from being a singer, he will be an instrumentalist. If you stop him from being an instrumentalist, he will be a point writer. If you stop him from being a point writer, he will be a human developer. You are too loaded. Your generation must hear your voice. Your world must hear your voice. Your generation must hear your voice. And I prophesy with my eyes open. 
Any power that said you cannot be announced, I command that power, bury my fire. 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 Can I hear somebody shout fire? Da, da, da. There are four elements that produce your enthronement. Number one, the Bible says we were bought by the blood. When you look at the scriptures we read, Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 5 and verse 6, establish the truth that the blood initiated us into this realm of do, into into this realm of dominance the bible said from jesus christ who is a faithful witness and the firstborn of the dead and the prince of the king of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sin by his own blood by his own blood i came to announce to somebody there is a blood that speaketh more better things than the blood of Abel. The Bible says we have not come to a mountain that cannot be touched. He said we have come to a mountain that cannot be touched. We have come to Mount Zion, <laughs> the holy city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the church of the firstborn. We have come to the general assembly. We have come to an innumerable companies of angels. We have come to God, the judge. We have come to spirit of judgment made perfect. We have come to the mediator. We have come to the blood of the sprinkling. The blood speaketh is speaking. And the blood speaketh more better things than the blood of Abel. Why the blood? The blood has been deployed to harass what want to harass you. The blood has been deployed to stop the aggression of the devil. I declare in any area of your life you've been victimized, ostracized, run down, limited, bastardized, confronted. Let the blood harass every devil. Bible said in Revelation 13 and verse 8, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that was slain from the foundations of the earth. This wall is sitting on blood. The foundations of this wall are sitting on blood. Everything that will ever last must stand on blood. Today I came to deploy what brought you to existence. And it is that blood that can end the enemy's aggression against you. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Can I prophesy? Any power that says you cannot rule financially, you cannot be enthroned maritally, you cannot be enthroned in business, you cannot be relevant in life. I command that power, silence by the blood. Blood of Jesus. Take your seat. Blood. Blood is God's last card. Blood is the food of spirits. Whenever everything fails, blood does not fail. Blood is God's joker. When everything refuses to co co cooperate with you, you fast like fasting machine. Pray like pray mountain. Hands have been laid on you. They put you in a drum of olive oil until you look like chips. <laughs> and your condition defies solution. We need to deploy the blood. Today I come with the whipping of the blood. There is something you are carrying that must answer to resolve. There is something you are in possession of that must respond to your greatness. There is a cry of greatness in the inside of every mortal man. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. That cry of greatness shall find expression. 
you were born to be great. Amen. Greatness is a state of being influential. Amen. Greatness is you trying to express the intention of the Almighty God for your life. Amen. Greatness, child of God, is expressing the intention of your Creator through your personality. Amen. Greatness, child of God, huh, is the fulfillment of purpose. The maximization of potential and the accomplishment of dreams. When, when purpose is fulfilled, potential maximizes, destiny accomplished, greatness becomes the result. And hear me and hear me well. Everything you need to be great has been deposited in the inside of you before you landed here. Why do men land here and end up becoming small? Why do men that were born to be mighty become Lilliputians? Why are men that are meant to be time bombs in their generation begin to explode like a knockout? Something is wrong. Whatever limited your capability and capacity to be fruitful in Chicago, the voice that cry against your glory, that cries against your greatness, I deploy the internal blood. Let that voice be internally silenced. You say, I am a stranger. Joseph was a stranger. Yet he rose to be the prime minister. Hear me, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I came to enthrone you. There are financial mafias that will rise here. Business gurus. Enter financial buffaloes. Hear me and hear me well. Men that shall be loaded. What you couldn't achieve in 10 years. I came tonight in 3 weeks. Your hand will carry that testimony. There are men of God and there are men of God. I came with the proof. I am not an orator. An orator is a gifted speaker. I am an oracle. An oracle is a problem solver. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. I came to solve your problem. Whatever resists you must catch fire. I say it must catch fire. I say it must catch fire. I say it must catch fire. Take your seat. Blood is very crucial. When everything fails, God, God, blood is what God uses to deploy. Both God and Satan have been trained to respect blood. Any battle that you are fighting and blood is deployed, whether it's the blood of animal, the blood of goats, bullocks, hyphas, the blood of a baby, any time blood is poured against a man, the battle ceases to be the battles of the mortals. It becomes the battles of the immortals. Blood invites spirits into a matter. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Blood is the food of spirits. Anytime you pour blood, spirits begin to come. They, they invite themselves and begin to sniff. Begin to sniff the blood and follow the man that poured the blood and ask him, what meanest thou? Why were you pouring the blood? When Solomon sat on the throne of Israel, and discover how enemies the responsibility of that throne was. The Bible says he, the king, went to Gibeon and spilled blood on God's altar until he poured blood until blood gushed out like gutter, water in a gutter. And the spirit behind the altar began to sniff the blood. He pursued the man that poured the blood until he found him in his house. He tapped him in the, in the, in, in the middle of his, of his sleep and he opened his eyes. He said, Solo, Solo, you were pouring blood on my altar. What do you want? What do you want? He said, I'm but a child. I don't know how to go in and to come out. Help me supernatural capabilities were deployed into the heart of that man. God gave him hearts 
like a son God, God enlarged his heart like a son in the seashore God tempered with his mandula of Blanganda the guy became a custodian of wisdom by reason of what God deployed into his mentality men that fought his father became student in the school of his wisdom I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here men that resisted David became assistants an instrument of assistance to Solomon David's enemies became Solomon's sponsors I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here when blood is speaking for you sir those that fought your enemies will begin to those that fought your father will begin to assist you to fulfill your dream talk to somebody after tonight after tonight your enemies will sponsor your project those that hate your face will rise and favor you those that don't want to see you will rise and favor you those that resist your glory shall begin to cooperate with you can i hear somebody shout that amen like a thunder became student in the school of his wisdom. They enrolled in the university of wisdom. The Bible says, and the whole world sought after Solomon. He sat on the throne and compelled his generation to bring all the resources of the earth and to pay tributes. What happened to Solomon? The involvement of heavens was at work in his life. Hear me and hear me well. When blood is deployed, Heaven gets involved. I prophesied to 29 people. After tonight, your life will experience 180 degree turnaround. 180 degree turnaround. 180 degree turnaround. Lift up your hands say in the name of Jesus. I deploy the blood for my enthronement. Let the blood speak over my life, over my destiny, over my finance, over my marriage, over my business. Let the blood speak. Take your seat. Take your seat. Anytime you are contending with someone over a job, over a relationship, and the person takes a blood on any altar against you, your fasting and prayer will be a wasted time. Your fasting and prayer becomes charismatic affliction and corporal punishment. Because fasting and prayer without blood deployment makes you a victim in the hands of men who are carriers of blood. Because you see, because you see, the battle of the spirit are fought with words and blood. The battles of the spirit are fought with words and blood. If you don't know how to speak, you will be buried by spiritual elements. Bible said in Hosea 14 and verse 1 to 2, when you go before the Lord, take words, take words, take words, take words. No but you say, O Israel, return to the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen from thy iniquity. Verse 2, he said, take with you words, 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 words are vehicles that convey destiny. Words are vehicles that carries divine elements to men who desire it. If you don't know how to speak, you can be buried. To remain an active participant in the game of life, you must be an active speaker. To remain an active participant in the game of life, you must be an active speaker. To go on living, you must go on speaking. Hear this. No battle ceases in the realm of the spirit until sufficient cry is raised. No battle ceases in the realm of the spirit until sufficient words are raised. The wall of the spirit respect words and blood. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. So if you are not a man given to words, you will be a victim all the days of your life. I know you know how to cry, but after you cry, please say something. Don't cry and stop at crying. 
when you cry please say something the bible talked about the widow woman who came to elisha crying the bible said and she cried saying sir when you cry please say something because your emotion does not move god it is your sayings that becomes your prescription for your destination i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here your saying is your prescription for his intervention without your saying there can never be a prescription for interventions learn to speak your will without your word is a waste hear me and hear me well those who command result in the spirit realm are men that are vociferous somebody say vociferous somebody say vociferous if you don't know how to speak you can be buried any witch can bury you any wizard can bury you that is why your life has looks catarized yamarized it's time to rise if thou shalt say to this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea if only you can say God is counting on your saying for him to perfect it who is ready to say something? Who's ready to say something? Shakote Barakotas. When Jesus was approaching the everlasting doors and the everlasting gates that were shut, and he didn't approach them by crying, he approached them by giving a word of command. Lift up your heads, oh you gates, and you everlasting doors, be ye lifted up the king of glory may come in and the king had a voice everything around your life is speaking your condition is saying something that is why when he approached the fig tree he saw nothing the bible said and he replied the fig tree that means the fig tree had said something then he said and he answered the fig tree that is to say the fig tree has said something any situation in your life is making a statement if there is lack of money in your pocket is making a statement if your life refuses to attract a husband is making a statement and every statement demands the reply of a man i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here it's time to reply every witch every condition every situation tonight the shabbat All this, Father Lord God, Father Lord God, Father Lord God, Father, pray like a convulsing patient. Who made you a spiritual lunatic? Father Lord God. Siri, Lowry, Siri, Lowry, Daniel, Siri, Lowry, Lowry. When there are digital tongues, when there is a realm in God, where you cross horizontal line of confidence, where you speak in tongues with capital letters. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Take some fire here. Take some fire here. Your mouth is not only to eat Chinese rice. Your mouth is not only forever. It is given to you to decide. Your tongue is the key for the conclusion of your life. Am I talking to somebody here? Tell your neighbor, I refuse to be broke. Tell your neighbor, say, I can never suffer. Tell your neighbor, say, to fear God. Me, I know go suffer. I know go beg for bread. Okay, there are Nigeria. That's it. God bless. There are Nigeria. Take your seat. What a great God we serve. I speak to you as the Lord liveth. Your mouth will preach fire. There is an impartation that will come on you. You will speak. You will speak with the voice of thunder. Your 
eyes will carry flames. Demons will tremble. I anoint you for weighty words. May your word be like bad arrows. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now hear this. The battle of the spirit are won by words and by blood. But hear this. There is a place in the realm of the spirit where words can reach. In that region, it is blood that speaks. So no matter how eloquent you are, there is a limit to which you can transact and be able to collect certain spiritual goods, such as your enthronement, your virtues, your glory, your potentials, your deposits, your, 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 your giftings. They are, the, they are the mercy of your words and the blood. But in the realm of the spirit, there is a place where words are inadequate. In that region, it is blood that speaks. In that region, it's going to be at the mercy of how many of how much blood you have deployed on God's altar. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. He said to Abel, where he said to Cain, where is Abel thy brother? He said, Am I my brother's keeper? He said, For the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Blood cries. It speaks. It speaks. Those of you from Africa, stretch your hand, I declare. Anyone who took blood of chicken, goats, blood of lizards, blood of human beings, directly, indirectly, to any shrine, any altar, to either favor you or disfavor you. But because now you are born again, it has negative implication on you. You are in US, but you are living like a villager. You are educated, but you live like an illiterate. You are a beautiful girl, but you, your life does not come to a beauty. Whatever makes your life opposite of your destiny, any blood that has been deployed, negative blood against you, I invoke a higher blood. There is a blood that speaketh more better things than the blood of Abel. Let the blood speak in the realm of the spirit. Let the blood cry against every blood of judgment, against every blood of poverty, against every cause of darkness, every limitation placed on your finance, your marital destiny, every power that says your beauty shall be wasted. I cause that tree, I command it to wither from its source, I release it from that tree. Somebody shout, I release myself. I feel so fine. Hold it. <laughs> we'll get to a level. Yes, we call it the cruising level. Yeah. Tonight I'm trusting God for his Holy Ghost hyper deluge. Yeah. Mighty supernatural crescendo. Yeah. There'll be a divine volcanic eruption. Yeah. Something will erupt in your spirit. Yeah. Somebody will walk out of here ten times taller. I came to rough handle what has rough handled you. I came to provoke the unstoppability of your destiny. I came so that somebody can be highly ruggedized, highly sagacious, full of rudility, rascality, and brutality. Somebody say rudility, rascality, and brutality. Highly sagacious. I don't expect you to be normal. There are many days in a man's life, but there are few days he doesn't forget. I call such days days of encounter. Tonight and tomorrow is one of such days. Take your seat. When you know how to deploy blood, you know how to stop spirit powers. Because many of you, what you are fighting, are empowered by spirit entities. Whenever a man fast and pray and things still don't change, there is a force that has been deployed in the realm of the spirit. And that force can only be stopped by blood. When you look at Exodus chapter 4 and verse 24, after God I encountered Moses in Exodus chapter 3, and called him and said, I'm sending you to undertake this tax to let my people, to release my people from the hand of their captor, Pharaoh. 
Moses said to God, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm a stammerer. I, 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 I cannot speak. God said, that is why I like you like that. The way I, I, I like you so that you don't talk too much. You just talk straight to the point. He said, hey, 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 are you mocking me? I, I, I am not going. God said, who made the mouth? He said, you God. He said, I shall be with your mouth. All you need is for God to be with your business. Be with your marriage. All you need is to confirm his presence. What was it disadvantage to become a pillar in your life? Are you following what I'm saying here? And the argument ended. God said, so tomorrow Moses, get ready. You are about to embark on this trip. Guess what? The next day came. Moses carried the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law. I went to Gracie. God met him by the way. Moses, what are you doing? When are we going? He said, I, I, I am not going. <laughs> Why? Is, is he by force? I said, I, 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 I'm not going. God said, you will go. He said, he, he, come and touch me now. I said, I, I am not going. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to go. The Bible said in the book of Exodus 4.24, uh, God met him by the way in the inn, and the Lord met him and sought to kill him. God held the neck of Moses and was strangling Moses. Moses was losing life. Moses was losing life. God wanted to kill him. When Sipora, the next verse, his wife saw that God wanted to kill Moses, she said to herself, what do I do to stop spirits from operating? The Bible says, she said to you, the only thing that can stop a spirit is blood. She searched for blood she could not find. She saw her son, she grabbed the boy, pulled down his trouser, held his penis, used a stone, cut off the first king of her penis and carry the blood and the skin and slap her husband the bible says she says surely a bloody husband thou art to me when god saw blood the next verse the bible says and the lord left him when i see the blood <laughs> i shall pass over you when i see demons have been trained to see the blood and surrender god the father has been trained to see the blood and surrender tonight i declare whatever blood that is stopping progress in your life there is another blood i deploy that blood tonight so he let him go so the lord let him go so the Lord let him go. Today, whoever will not let you go and marry, will not let you have money, will not let you succeed, I present a higher blood. Your enthronement for greatness. Tonight, it is confirmed. 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 Take your seat. Hear this. Every king, every enthronement is confirmed. One, by blood. Two, by the oil. Three, by the altar. Four, by the prophet. Amen. When these four apparatus are in place, your predestination, your longevity, your impartation, they are confirmed. Amen. You need the altar. You need the prophet. You need the oil. You need the blood. These are the four things I shall be interplaying with. I'll be intertwining with them in the course of my ministration tonight and tomorrow. Amen. I shall engage these elements Amen. to provoke something out of you. Amen. You are born to shine. You cannot be deshined. You are born to be known. You cannot be unknown. You are born to be relevant. You cannot be irrelevant. Can I talk to somebody here? After tonight, your life will move from the back side to the front line. From a nobody to a somebody. From a non-entity to a some entity. 
from a coincidence to cause incident, from rejection to protection, from signification to glorification. The stone that the builder have rejected, after tonight it shall become the chief cornerstone. Can I hear you shout that amen like a thunder? Take your seat, relax, relax, relax. Show me every enthronement. Show me every release. Every release. Either release of potential. Or release men from captivity. Release that has to do with people being free from the things that tie them. Or release from any form of bondage. You will see these things playing their role. The oil. The blood. The prophet. And the altar. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's three. Sometimes it's the four. David was a mysterious man because these four things he that play. He that twine with prophet until he outlive certain prophets. He that twine with prophet until he outlive somewhere, outlive God. He almost outlive Nathan. Nathan was a lucky man until David became prophet himself. He that twine with priests until he became priest. He took and tapped the two rims and the urims and hear the voice of God. David was a dangerous man. He was a priest, he was a prophet. Because he that why when somewhere entered his house, there was a deployment of oil. David also the other day, the Bible said Satan provoked him. And he began to number Israel. Judgment came in second Samuel 24. How did he stop the angel and relay the angel from uh, from continuing his aggression by blood? David understood the mysteries, these four things. Life is spiritual. If you don't approach it spiritually, you'll be a victim. There's more to what the eyes can see, the ears can hear. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. There is more in the spirit realm than what you can comprehend. To approach life ordinarily is to die a victim. So what is my approach? You must know the things that enthrone man. Some of us became sophisticated and brutal because we understood these four instruments. If I want to kill a man, I deploy these instruments. The prophet. Prophet is God's method for making men. Yes. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. When they show up, it becomes your time for prophets. Yes, sir. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. And the altar is a mysterious place because altar is a traffic place where spirits meet. Altar is a meeting point where divinity meets with humanity. So that humanity can be swallowed by the presence of divinity. So that men can discharge their responsibility with the touch of divinity. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. The blood, the, the blood is, is at work. Then the oil, they are all mysterious. But let me save you all of this grammar. And try to, 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 to give a particular line of approach so that I can stop somewhere tonight. What are the benefits you get when God enthrones you? Or let's put it this way. What are the things that provoke your enthronement? There are three, but I give you one. Isaiah 45, verse 1 to 7. And that is where I'm going to stay for the night. And let you go and browse in your spirit all I've said. Tonight, I'm returning here tomorrow. Because tomorrow morning, I'm coming here like a caterpillar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't have break. Anything that is stopping you must die. Yeah. Thou sayest the Lord to his anointed. There must be oil somewhere. Amen. To Cyrus, whose right hand I am holding. Uh, to subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings. If your Bible is not a borrowed one, underline lose the loins of kings. To open before him the two league gates. If it's not a borrowed one, put underline two league gates. Mm. And the gates shall not be shut. Mm, mm, mm. I will go before thee. Lift your hands and say, Lord, Lord go before me. Go before me. In, Chicago. In Chicago, go before me. Go before me. I will go before thee. I will make the crooked paths straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in asunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Can somebody shout amen there? Yeah. I will give you the hidden riches of secret places. Yeah. That thou might know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, I am the Lord God of Israel. Yeah. 
for Jacob Joshua Kalinas, my servant sake, for David Philemon, my elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. You can underline that word, surname thee. Though thou hast not known me. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Underline, though thou hast not known me. <laughs> and then he said, I am the Lord. He is boasting. <laughs> there is none else. There is no God beside me. I guided thee, though thou hast not known me. Underline again, though thou hast not known me. Verse 6 said again, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. God, and there is none else. Verse 7, let's read it together. One to go. I found the light and create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. This scripture we read was a cycle that existed between Israel and God. I'm trying to bring a conclusion to what I'm, I've begun saying. And this cycle is a romantic cycle. God saw their grandfather Abraham in the land of Mesopotamia, in the Chaldeans, and saw him worshipping the sun and the moon. And God said, I like the way this guy is committed. When I bring him on the other side, he's going to serve me faithfully. So God strike a hey young man, I know you are worshipping all these things for a blessing. I know that because at 75 you are still squatting in your father's house. It means you need a breakthrough. Your wife is barren. You need a breakthrough. Come out from your father's house unto a land that I will show you. I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. And through you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. On that ticket, he departed. God enacted a covenant of circumcision. Bless that man. Led his, led them, his children and his seed into captivity. And then brought them out and gave them the land of the Judicide, Canaanite, Perizide, Hittite, Hivite. He gave them the land of their enemies. They perished the Perizide, put the Judicide out of sight, killed the Canaanite, hit the Hittite, and they took their possession. Come on now. And they sat in their place of dominion. Not too long when they were enthroned, they forgot God. They forgot the one who brought them. They began to worship other gods. God got angry, sent them a tyrant who came and invaded their lands and took them captive, killed their mighty men of war, take their wives and their sons into captivity, remove them from their land. When they are in their land of captivity, they will cry to God. God will hear from heaven and show them mercy. He will send them a deliverer. Deliverer will come and liberate them from the hands of their captor. He will deal with the, 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 their captor and then bring them to their land and prosper them. Not too long again, they will forget God and start serving other gods. God will be angry. He will send them another tyrant. He will take them captive and destroy their mighty men of war, take their wives captive and their sons and their daughters. They will be in captivity for a long time. They will cry again. God will hear from heaven. He will deliver them. The cycle was endless from the time of the, of the judges, from time of Deborah, time of Gideon, times of Samson, and times, time, uh, time of, of, of other Barak, other great judges, even to the time of prophet Samuel, time of David who brought political dynasty, time of Solomon who brought the economic, financial, dynasty and rest. Time of Rehoboam to time of Ezekiah. And then they were doing this thing over and over and over and over. It was in one of those cycles that God got angry when he has enthroned them and they forgot him. This time around he sent a tyrant called Nebuchadnezzar. This man had ruled his world for 200 years. A kind of America of today that rules the world. This man is feared. He conquered 128 nations, made them to pay tributes. Everybody dreaded Nebuchadnezzar. When Israel sinned against God, Nebuchadnezzar was sent by God. He entered Israel. Israel never remained normal. He set the temple of Solomon on fire, uprooted the pillars that were made of sapphire and gold, carted away with 300 trillion worth of gold, 300 trillion worth of gold in the temple of Solomon from the treasuries of the king. He pulled out the pillars, set the temple that was built with 30 trillion dollars. He set the temple on fire, pulled down the walls of Jerusalem, took their wives, captives, and their sons, men like Daniel, Shedah, Meshavego, he took them to captivity. He carried their king to Hakim. He broke his two eyes. He carried his two eyes and fried it and gave it to eat. He was eyeless. 
he was in prison for 35 years he never saw the sun Nebuchadnezzar dealt with every man brutally and then took them into captivity in, his, in, in Babylon what interests me about this story sir is that when you enter Babylon as a captive you die you may never come out the reason is simple Babylon is surrounded by walls Nebuchadnezzar built a wall around Babylon it's 200 feet above the sea level this pillar you see is just about five to six feet so imagine 200 feet so tall and as if that was not enough it's 86 feet far that 12 cars or chariots can ride on top of the wall you can build three bedrooms through the wall the wall is so thick babylon has only one gate called the two leaf gates someone say the two leaf gates it's 50 feet top fast and then 89 feet tall and that gate is manned by the sons of anax nine-footed men with six fingers and six toes a representation of abnormality these men don't slap you they only join their hand on your face you become lepatious you reduce in shape if you have pointed nose when they land you you have flat nose on the spot any part they use their hand on you depreciates then you 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 give chance to vacancy i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here there's vacancy in every aspect when they deal with you these are the men that mans the go the gate and every time they have up to 250 garrisons of soldiers that guide the gates of Babylon. And that is not enough. Nebuchadnezzar went to the river of Euphrates, a pool and artificial lake, and surrounded Babylon with a lake 500 feet tall, and brought all manner of wild reptiles and animals, hippopo, crocodiles, sharks, wild serpents, put them in the water, and made the navy to man the waterways. So Babylon was surrounded by water. You will come through the ship and to the gates, when you get there, the moment you drop, you will meet what we call the two leaf gates. When that gate is open, you will enter and then meet gate of brass and iron, 120 of gates, before you can assess Babylon. So if you enter Babylon as a slave till you die, you may never come out. The Bukadnezah had one million foot soldiers, 800,000 chariots of iron. Babylon also is a religious city. They worship 600 gods. And those gods that's for human blood. So every month, Nebuchadnezzar slaughtered 600 human beings to give to those gods. One of those gods they worship is Lord, Luka, Lord, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is one of the gods of India. India worship 33 million gods. I go to India every year, sometimes twice in April, I'll be there. I, I preach in a church of 21,000 people. And uh, they worship God. In India, if you do like this and your leg is a miracle leg, India will worship that place. They worship virtually everything. Lord Shiva is a god that has permanent red eyes with weep. He weep his followers. And these are one of the gods that they worship. And every month, Nebuchadnezzar slaughtered these 600 human beings by the river of Shiva. And the river of Shiva is one of the rivers drawn from the Indian Ocean into Babylon. And you follow what I'm saying here? And the river of Shiva was where Nebuchadnezzar killed 600 human beings every month and sacrificed to their gods. Nebuchadnezzar, when he went to Israel, spared all the elderly ones in Israel from 60 five years upward he kept them aside for sacrifice in one of those seasons he kept sacrificing only elders of the each of israel he will sacrifice them it was that river of shiva that nebuchadnezzar called and changed it to call the river of babylon it was there they were slaughtering the jews what every month they were killing them it was in one of those slaughters uh, that the priest looked at them and said when i used to go to israel and i used to sacrifice to your god he used to sing a song please sing to us one of those songs of zion that was where psalm 137 was written by the rivers of babylon there we sat down and wept when we remember zion and the hidden took us captivity this required of us a song they say unto us sing unto us one of those songs of zion and we said how can we sing the lord's song in a strange land child of god if there's any time you need to sing is when it is not working the devil can shut down your pocket he can shut down your marriage but don't let him shut down your mouth because if your mouth is not closed you still stand the chance of restoration you still stand the chance of recovery I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here
Follow me. I will soon land somewhere. I will soon land somewhere. I want to show you how God can go before you. Your enthronement cannot be in doubt. Anytime God wants to enthrone you, He goes ahead of you. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, Lord, go before me. Lord, say it again, Lord, Lord go before me. Lord, me. These are the apparatus that guarantees enthronement. If you must be enthroned, God must go ahead of you. You've been going on your own. After tonight, Jehovah will take the lead. Yeah. Who can battle with the Lord? Yeah. Who can battle with the Lord? Can I talk to somebody? Yeah. This is your night of change. Yeah. Take your seat, take your seat. Let me run my story. Let me run my story. I'm giving you a little history. A little history. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Now, they cried to God. They made sacrifices. They were crying. They were crying, Lord, deliver us from this slavery. We were kings unto God. We are to reign. We are to shine. Solomon days we saw prosperity. What befell us? Why is our life like this? They were crying. They were killing their elderly ones. Their sons and their daughters were being used as servants and slaves. Their wives were being raped. All kinds of things was going on. The people cried again and cried. Man of God, in respond to their cry. He respond to their sacrifice. He respond to their spilling of blood and calling on God. God decided to answer them like he answered them in time past. But this time around, hear how God answered them. God went to a tiny island and met a young king who was sleeping on his bed by the name King Cyrus. He was sleeping doing his own business. Suddenly, a voice filled the room, Cyrus, Cyrus. He thought it was a dream at first. Suddenly, he gained consciousness and discovered it wasn't a dream. The voice had filled the whole room. Cyrus, he jumped out of his bed. Cyrus, he ran to open the door. God had locked the door and put the key in his pocket. He pushed the door, the door couldn't open. He pulled out his sword. Who are you? I am the God of Israel. Though thou hast not known me, but I have anointed you. For the first time, God called an unbeliever my anointed. Simply because he wants to liberate the people. I want to show you how far your God can go to release you from the things that hold you down. I don't know who you are, but I came to let you know that if a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. There are people God will trouble for your sake after tonight. They will not sleep until they release your money. They will not sleep until they release your favor. They will not sleep until they release your breakthrough. They will not sleep until they release your marriage. They will not sleep until they give you what you want to do you. Somebody say, Lord, go before me. Take your seat. Follow me because I'm finding somewhere to run. I am the God of Israel. Dude, thou hast not known me. That was what Isaiah 45 was written. Cyrus, my anointed, with whom I have holy. You see which anointed? He said, from your mother's womb. I saw name thee. Before Cyrus was born, 600 before he was born, 600 years before he was born, as I had prophesied him, had talked about a man who is a non-believer that will come to liberate God's people. You are a child of prophecy. You cannot die a destiny. You are carrying a prophecy. Your prophecy must be realized. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. He said, he said, with you I will subdue kingdoms and kings and nations. I will lose the lungs of kings. He says, so Lord, what do you want me to do? I want to send you to set my people free. Which of your people? Israel. We are in the hand of the Bukadnezar, the king of Babylon. Cyrus said, Babylon what? He said, Babylon. Me should go and confront Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He said, Lord, I can see you don't love me. I have 30, 36,000 soldiers. I have 8,000 chariots. How do I confront a man with 1 million soldiers? It is like Ghana coming to fight America. <laughs> it is like Niger Republic trying to come and fight America. How possible is it? How possible is it? A dynasty that has reigned for 200 years. He said, Lord, it's not true. God, please. He said, I am the Lord. He said, 
How? He said, I will go before you. Is that what you are saying? He said, yes. I will go before you. That's all you need, my son. I will go before you. He said, but there's a gate called the Tulip Gate. He said, I will open it. I go. We open the gate. And that gate shall not be shut. He said, what about the gate of brass and iron? He said, we cut them asunder. We cut them asunder. He said, what about the armies? He said, we make every crooked path straight. I will make every rough path smooth. Lord, go before me. Go before me. Somebody say, Lord, go before me. He said, I will go before you. All you need is for me to go before you. What was impossible shall become possible. He said, God, I don't think I'm going. God said to him, okay, let's have a deal. I'm going to give you all the monies of Nebuchadnezzar. All the wealth of Nebuchadnezzar. Every money Nebuchadnezzar ever had, I will give you the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, the 300 trillion that Nebuchadnezzar carted away, I will give it to you. When Cyrus had money, he became an evil brother. No, 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 he became an American. America loved money more than evil. America, you know, them, they love money more than. I thought evil men likes money until I met Americans. Until I met Americans. America, America exists by deception and craftiness. They rule the world. They rule the world by deception and craftiness. Now the Arabians' eyes are opening, the Europe eyes, even Africa eyes is opening. We are suspecting them. They better change their tactics because they are losing grip of the nations. If I'm talking to somebody here, yeah. you don't understand some prophetic things. Tomorrow I will prophesy till I sit on the floor because some of you, your file has just opened. Yeah. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. <laughs> Cyrus became an American. When he had money, ego, he said, Lord, when are we going? <laughs> A particular day was set. Cyrus got him, got him out of that revelation. Went to see his friend, Dairos, king of the Medes. He is Cyrus, king of Persia, And his friend was the, the, uh, Dairos, king of Medes. He said, oh boy, last night one God appeared to me. He said, he's the God of Israel. He said, I should go to set his people free. Which people? He said, Israel. Where? He said, in the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebua, he said, Buklanza. He put hand on his head. He should say, no, they're fever. Are you sure it's no fever? Nebuka what? So boy, you're on your own. Me go. This is suicide mission. You can go. He said, the God say he will go before me. He said, and so what? He go before you. I mean, stand in front of him. He said, he will open the two leaf gates. I will not struggle to open. Have you told him that there's gate of brass? He said, yes. He said, he will break it asunder. <laughs> Did you tell him that Nebuchadnezzar had army? He said, yes. He said, he will make crooked paths straight. He said, my own is to obey. is to finish the work. <laughs> this week, next week, April. Professor, you will hold your peace. God shall fight your fight. You will hold your peace. God shall fight your fight. Lift your hands up. Take your seat. Something is about to break loose. He said, oh boy, you are your own. He said, but that God said. He will give you all the wealth of Nebuchadnezzar, all the hidden riches of sacred places. Say, the God say, will give you his So, what do you do? He said, just obey. He said, He will give you his hair. He said, oh, But which day are we going? <laughs> which day are we going? <laughs> when money comes inside matter. He said, Which day are we going? And the day was fixed. Cyrus brought his 36,000 soldiers, Dairos brought 36,000, make it 72. They brought at 8,000, 8, 16,000 chariots. They began to march towards Babylon. Hey. It looks to me like that song that said, The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The church. They were advancing. Man of God, this time around, Nebuchadnezzar had died. His son, Belshazzar, had taken over. 
But since I landed on wealth, that I didn't know what money, what to do with money. So it was a time when God arranged, God is a master strategist. He know how to give your enemy a blow by the belt. God will make your enemy stupid this week. My eye has just opened. I see a lot, a lot. Somebody's account has been credited. Just like that, just like that, just like that, just like that. You're about to drive car you did not buy. You will own houses you did not build. You will eat fruit from trees that you did not sow. But you will own those trees. The devil is a liar. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God is on your side, power is on your side, anointing is on your side, favor is on your side, blessing is on your side. Make your hands up. marching towards Babylon I the Lord said I will go before you when they got close the Caesar was celebrating his birthday he was so rich that he celebrated his birthday for 70 days he celebrated his birthday for how many days 70 days and each of those days outstanding authentic things we have been revealed and shown that we are never repeated the following day. And in that birthday, he served both the poor and the rich with the cup of gold, spoon of gold, fake of gold, plate of gold. To me, my imagination, that was the first time poor men saw gold. So when they ate rice from the plate of gold and drank water and wine from the cup of gold, many of them say, man, this is not only for eating, it's for takeaway. <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> they hide it. Oh God, help me tonight. Something's about to break loose. Well, but since I was celebrating his birthday, these men were approaching Babylon. God went ahead of them. The soldiers saw a coming army, a moving army. They put a call through to the chief of defense. There was no answer. Chief of Defense was in the birthday party. They put a call through to the IG of police. Inspector General, there was no answer. Inspector General was in the party. They put a call through to the NSA, National Security Advisor, there was no answer. The DSS, State Security Services, there was no answer. And all you know, soldiers, you must obey the last command. So you must not take and shoot a gun or an arrow until you obey the last command. The other one looked at the other one, he said, oh boy, I just got married. These guys, only God knows what they are doing. Whether these people are coming for birthday party or they are coming for war, we don't know. But the way they are advancing, they don't look like men that are coming for peace. Since our guys are enjoying party and don't want to tell us what to do, before these men kill me, I just got married. I've not enjoyed my wife. Excuse me, fire on the mountain. Wrong, 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 wrong. The other one said, I have three children. If, 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 if I die, who will train the children? Fire on the mountain. Wrong, wrong, wrong. But the time Cyrus and Tyros got there, there was no soldier. The gate was open. Because a God said, I will go before you. Can I prophesy to somebody? In this month of March and April, there is something that is about to happen to you that is impossible with men. But with God, it is possible. My God will go before you. Cyrus looked at Dairo and said, did I tell you that God said he will go before us? You can see no soldier. Who would have said two leaf gates will be open like that? Because God said, I will open the two leaf gates. They walked through the two leaf gate, got to the gate of brass and iron, 120 of them. The same fate repeated itself. The soldiers have run and they went through those gates. And Cyrus looked at Dairo and said, can you see? From the beginning of our journey, not one arrow was shot because a God said he will go before us. He said, what are we waiting for? Straight to the palace to overthrow King Nebuchadnezzar, who has taken over from Nebuchadnezzar. As they were approaching the palace, God went ahead of them because he said, I will go before you. God entered the party hall and began to write on the wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Oprasim. 
just to distract them. That word mene mene is a Hausa language in Nigeria. <laughs> Someone say mene mene. Mene means mene the one that want to take you. I'm talking to somebody. It's both the mene mene tekel or prasi is Yoruba. Or prasi. All the journeys. Dosi. All put it together. And you follow what I'm saying here? <laughs> and besides I was drinking, he dropped his cup. He was flabbergasted, aghasted. Turn to chief of defense staff. What does this handwriting mean? He said, oh God, in my 35 years as a military man, I've never seen this kind of terminology. They call IGIG, say, Sam in police college, we don't know this. They call NSA, NSA, say, this is more spiritual. We, 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 this education and intellectuality can, intellectualism cannot help us. Send for your soothsayers, enchanters, necromancers, diviners, invokers of darkness. They brought native doctors, soothsayers, necromancers, diviners, all of them came with, with that hair on their head, with short rods in their hand. They appear before Phil, before Bethesda. Bethesda said, I've been feeding you the last 35 years. Today you will show what you carry. Look at this handwriting. What have you got to say? For the first time we saw shorthand, the hand of God, writing shorthand. <laughs> they brought the native doctor, the chairman of native doctor. He screamed and did, Adudu. Adudu. He said, oh king, it is Sikibus and Columbus that we are fighting. Sikibus got angry and caught the hand of Columbus. And Columbus says he's coming for revenge. The king says, arrest this idiot. We are talking serious matter. And you're calling Sikibus and Columbus. Arrest that idiot. Cut off his head. And they brought a Nigeria white government prophet. A select prophet. Only. Only. In Jemuraya. In the Felicia. Only. He said, Oh King, it is in the Felicia Arafa that are fighting. Felicia caught the hand of Rafa. Oh, Siri Lauri. Holy, holy. Holy. He said, Rafael is coming for return man. The king said, Arrest this idiot. Cut off his head. Well, they were missing the king. His grandmother stood up and walked towards him. He said, My son, be at peace. There is a man in your kingdom. There is a man in your kingdom whom the spirit of the Holy God is upon. Light and understanding are upon him. His name is Daniel. Send for him. After tonight, they will send for somebody. I know they forgot you, but they shall remember you. God will create an occasion, a circumstances that we demand for your arrival, for your enthronement, your showing forth has come, for the endless expectations of the creator waited eagerly for the manifestations of the sons of God. This is your hour to be revealed. You've been in darkness enough. You have been covered enough. Your glory must be revealed. Somebody say, Lord, go before me. When they brought Daniel, the king said, I accept my apology for forgetting you, my government, all these years. Please, I apologize. The king said, the Daniel said, no problem, king. He uh, said, Daniel, I learned that you are very loaded and that you can interpret. What is this handwriting? And whose hand is this? Daniel looked at it and said, it's the hand of Jehovah. It's the hand of the I am. The one that fishes water with a basket to teach the bucket that is not needed. The one that passes through the ocean and is not wet. The one that has no birthday, no death date. Yet he created people with birthday and death date. The El Shaddai, the Jehovah Rapha, the Agidiba God, the indomitable, uncontestable God. Jehovah, mighty man of war. Spoken, that is his hand. He said, what is he trying to tell us? Please, Daniel, explain to me. I will give you half of my kingdom. When Daniel saw the handwriting and knew what it meant, he said, King, keep your kingdom. He said, no way you have it that you can give. For what I am saying, you don't even have a kingdom. Keep it and dash to anybody. But as for me, I'm going to interpret. My name is God has numbered your kingdom. 
Tekel means your end has come. Or Brazil means the pressure and the menace shall come for your head this night. Well, Daniel was interpreting, Cyrus bolted the door with his armies and Cyrus. They invaded the place. When the armies were trying to pull out the sword, other generals went and captured them. When Persia wanted to pull his sword, Cyrus put his sword by his neck. He said, you are under arrest. Surrender the kingdom. Who will say that they can capture Obama from Niger and take him captive? He who will say Iran will come here and carry your president and take him captive. It has to be an invisible hand that is greater than America. That hand will work for you this week. That is what God sent me to tell somebody. You are fighting impossible battles. You don't know how to come out of them. People have boasted and said they will run you down. People looked at you and said you will not succeed. You've been in this late nation 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You have nothing to show. Fine girl, every day you are deteriorating. You are wasting away. No man is asking you, I love you. Heart breaks everywhere. You've called on God. You fasted. You prayed. It appears as if your prayer is fighting you. There is a God that we go before you. That is what I can to tell somebody. I did come for everybody. My eyes open, 70 people. If God ever called me, Shakoteba, Regeto Malakatos, if God ever called me, 17 of you, within the next seven days, your testimony will be in your heart. I said to be in your heart. I said to be in your heart. I said to be in your heart. I say to be your heart. I say to be your heart. Lift up your hand, say, Lord, go before, me. go before me. Your pastor knows I am not one of those preachers that joke. No service my feet enter that there is no volume of testimony. In the last one year, any church I enter, they lose two hours to take testimonies in every service for the next one month. Watch out after tomorrow, the next Sunday. There shall be volumes of testimonies. People will enter strange places. You will own that property without owing the bank. The money will come out of their pockets. God will so much favor them. When a man's ways please the Lord, he make it his enemies to be at peace with you. Get ready. Something is about to break loose in your life. When the sword was on the neck of Cyrus, of Bethesda, the Bible said the ghetto, sign of his rulership that was on his waist, loosed. Because he said, we lose the lungs of kings. Man of God, when that ghetto fell from the waist of Bethesda, Bethesda slum and died. I repeat, Cyrus did not kill him. He died. He slum. Why did he die? Because God doesn't want any man to take glory. Anything he starts, he must finish. He started without a fight. Only him began the fight. Only him will finish it. Because if you allow Cyrus to kill Bethesda, Cyrus will take the glory. So from the beginning of the journey to the end, it was God doing it. I prophesy. In the next seven days, it will be God that is working. 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 I can hear 17 people. 17 people. 17 people. There is a mantle God will remove from me and put on 17 people. I carry results. Go and ask the people from my nation. Some of my daughters are here. I carry results. If I speak to your life, no power can stop it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? There are men that when they enter your life, your story changes drastically. Cyrus died. And Bethesda died. Cyrus only harvested his head and they blew the trumpet that was overthrown. 
There was no more throne for Cyrus, for Bethesar and Nebuchadnezzar dynasty. Cyrus looked at Dairos. He said, this throne, I don't like it. Oh, me not the money I want, not the throne. Dairos said he likes the throne. Oh. Dairos said he will become king from, from Babylon. Cyrus said to him, Shushan, he said, no for me. I'm going back to Shushan to rule. You can rule from here. Beg me! I'm going for the money. Ego. He went and brought nothing less than $600 trillion from the treasuries of Nebuchadnezzar. And then he called all the Jews and gave each Israelite 17,000 pounds to go back to their nation. He gave Nehemiah and Ezra, he gave them $6 trillion to go and build the Temple of Solomon and to raise the walls of Jerusalem. When the people of God walked out of Babylon that day, they looked back. So is this a dream? We entered here 70 years ago. There was no hope. So one day we will be free. That was where Psalm 126 verse 1 was written. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. The heathen said the Lord has done great thing for them. Wherein they are rejoicing. And the heathen cried, Turn our captivity, O Lord. And the Israelites replied, They that sow in tears must reap with joy. Those that go forth bearing precious seed shall doubtless return, bringing in the harvest. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, my God will go before you this week. Tomorrow morning, everybody, you are coming with a soda that represents the blood. Whether it is anything that looks reddish, wine, grape wine. Don't bring anyone with alcohol. If you bring anyone with alcohol, we shall lay hands on you. You will experience double somersault. You bring no alcoholic, then you bring me a bottle of oil, then you bring me a bottle of water. I'm going to be having three in one service with you. Very brutal service. Something will break loose in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And people that were slaves walked out free to be enthroned. The Bible said then Nebuchadnezzar released Joachim, a blind man, and gave him the king's portion, uh, Cyrus, and said to him, go back and rule your people. 35 years in chain without seeing the sun walked out and went to be to be enthroned i don't know where they kept you i know don't, don't know the condition that life has three uh, have, have done to you but i came with the good news wherever you are under the sound of my voice this is the last time you will be in this condition by the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon my life. Wherever you are right now, lift up your hands, stand on your feet. There is a mighty presence. The Holy Ghost said to me, when I finish this preaching, he will rest on 17 people. They will not be able to stand on their feet. There's a glory that will fall on their life. There is something they are carrying that must find expression. Lift up your hands, say, Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah, go before me in my business, in my career, in my marriage. Go before me. Clap your hand and pray that prayer.
took a stone from your womb. He said, tell this woman, the spell has been broken. He said, tell this woman, there shall be a celebration in her life. Stretch your hands, say, Lord, release the celebration. Release the celebration. Within one year, what 
to put in activity 10 years. The crowd you couldn't see in 10 years. Says the Spirit of the Lord shall come on you. What is on my life? Whatever you saw that you desire, I put it on you. Whatever you saw in my life that you desire, I put it on you. In the name of Jesus. Pastor and his wife are the two others. Remain 13 people. God said to me, they should raise an altar of sacrifice. They should spill blood on my altar of a seed of a thousand dollars. There are 13 of them. I am, I'm collecting this one from the four of them. The remaining 13, wherever you are, come here and sit on this seat. God said, I should pour oil on you. Rise and take you today from where you are. I put you on the throne of destiny. I command the throne of your
Financial instrument yes, that every man who came out for a thousand dollars, not because they have, not because they have what to waste, but because you are first in everything and they are ready to sacrifice anything mm -hmm. to honor you. They have only prioritized you, they have only show you that you are the first in their life. Yes. And that whatever you make out of them, that the glory will come to you. Amen. Some of them will have to look for the money. Some have it, but it is not much. But yet they are taking it out of pain and pressure and sacrifice to give to you. My King, my God, maker of heaven and earth, the God who visited an unbeliever and shouldered the responsibility on him to bless the people of God. That same God, I declare, we raise wicked men and women in this city, people that hate God, to rise and fight your cause Amen. and sponsor your project, Amen. sponsor your vision, Amen. begin to get jobs without interview, Amen. get papers without effort, Amen. let there be arrival without journey, Amen. let there be marriage without dating. Amen. Let there be a, a, a attainment without steps. Amen. Let there be success without effort. Amen. Let there be job without interview. Amen. Let there be promotion without exams. Amen. Let there be anointing without fasting. Amen. Let the people enter another strange realm. Amen. Let the visitations of heaven be strong in this church. Amen. Lift your hands and do kus kapriyan to kono monos kobrandis. Break it to skapriyan da katoski. Man of God, the Spirit of God is saying there are people who don't have a thousand. But they, they knew this service was for them. And they are ready to be enthroned. If they have a thousand, they would have given to God. And they don't have, and they don't have faith for it. But if the pastor can step down a little, they can be also be worth this clothes. I may not give you a seat to sit because there's no time. But I want to put my suit on you and ask God to honor you. Last night when I was preaching in Minnesota, they tore my suit. One of the sisters is sewing it. They grab my suit, my shoe, my legs everywhere. They almost want to tear me into pieces because of the visibility of tangibility of God's presence. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I only came to test the ground. I'm coming for return march tomorrow. I'm coming like a caterpillar without break. Heaven will kiss the earth. 
destinies will change in a drastic, in a cataslamic way. In a drastic and cataslamic way. This set of people you don't have. But God said, I want to enthrone you. I want to do for you what, what 10 years of effort can give you. He said, if I leave you in America, you will die, Papa me, says the Lord. He said, I want to change the level playing ground. I'm a game changer, says the Lord. I want to change the game of your life. I want to bring you into a strange realm of honor. He said, raise an altar of 300. Run here, $300. Come quickly. Put the, put the suit on them. I prophesy. Stand behind. Put it behind them. Put them behind them. Yes. Take the suit. Come. Let's put it behind them.
tomorrow, I'm going to give a mantle. And the mantle will be given to only people who bring two persons. If you bring me two persons and put a mantle in your hand, it's called generational mantle. It's called an overlay divine investment. It's called pressurized function under pressure. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Two persons, any two persons that follow you to church, you go home with a mantle. People are carrying my mantle and raised dead. Sparring people's womb have been open. Man of God, this church will know God has sent them a prophet. But there is this few set of people. By the time they will realize God has visited them and sent them a man of God, I would have gone. They will start looking and they miss the day of their visitation. They are very few. They pretend that they are not here, but they knew God is visiting them. May you not be among the set of God. Amen. Tomorrow, look for the resources. Those of you for 1,000, come with perfume. The one you are using, I will change your smell. Yeah. Because how you smell determines what you attract. Yeah. The anointing empowers you, but your smell announces you. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, the one that comes out of the toilet and the one that comes out of the kitchen don't smell the same. Yeah. The one that comes out of the, the kitchen smells kitchen. But the one that comes out of the toilet smells yeah. denointing. <laughs> because opposite of anointing is denointing. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. Tomorrow morning will be crazy. Get the POS ready. Those who need to pay through the POS, we pay. You don't owe God, and you will not be Esau in this service. Amen. Jacob brought it in a hurry. Esau linger, and they took what belongs to him. You made a vow, but you brought it at your own time, so you lose destiny. You lose speed in life. You carry it not at your terms, but at his terms. Amen. Tomorrow all shall be received. Amen. If you pledge a thousand, you pledge three hundred, shall be received. Amen. And those who couldn't come out, let God deal with you his own way and move you to do what you need to do. Amen. Because enthronement is not cheap. There is what to do to provoke the entire heavens. I came with some brutal books. They can change the color of your skin. It's twenty dollars each. You buy three, I send you fifty dollars. Turning adversity into breakthrough. The number one Christian in Nigeria forwarded it. This one, any pastor that carry this book, you can never be normal. Liquidacious fire will burn in your bones. This book is called Generating Fresh Impact Under Pressure. What they refuse to give you by choice, a radical under pressure will take it. This one is called Battle for Rest. You must rest. Because rest is the splendor of a maximized potential. It is the it is it is it is it is the product of a fulfilled destiny. My prophet, my destiny. Take it all principles. 20 nugget for making the difference. Dealing with the 14 pollutants of evil. Essence for living. Dynamics of fruitfulness. Pick them. These are all I came with. If you miss it, you miss a, an opportunity of 28 years experience that can be delivered to you in two hours of reading this book. Get them. They will change your life. Bow your head as I close this service. As I hand over the mic. Father, you can bless the wicked. Every man must be righteous to be lifted by you. You are here tonight. You know if you die now, you're not sure. If you like, give us money. You will go to hell if you're not born again. You must surrender your life. Your money is a waste. And your beauty is useless until you are saved. You know if you die now, you're not sure you will make it to heaven. You want to say to me, man of God, pray for me. I want to make peace with God tonight. Something entered me. And I want to make it right. Raise that hand up. Let me pray for you. God bless you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart afresh. Be Lord over my life. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me now from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name. And let God's people shout, Amen. Everybody take a seat in your hands, lift them up, let me pray. Father, I prophesy, everyone raising a seed to say thank you for what you have done tonight. Let it be permanent in their life. Let the glory of the risen Christ 
be unleashed upon every seed giver, every seed sower, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I'm in a hurry. I didn't for, I forgot to carry my own offering. I dressed and left the money in the trouser. Can somebody give me hundred dollar? Let me give my offering. Everybody, lift your own. The Lord say you must dance and you must celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Somebody give me hundred dollars. I'm sure we don't have stingy persons here. Amen. Thank you. Father, lift your offerings up. Lift your seed up. Father, I bless the substance of your people. Let favor go with your people. In Jesus' name. Blast in tongues till you drop it on the altar. Don't, I didn't say speak in tongues. Rap in tongues. When you speak in tongues, that is Gindagati. We rap in tongues. There is PhD in the realm of the spirit. We are rap in tongues and come here. You don't know how to speak in tongues. Just be shouting, mercy Lord, mercy Lord, and come here. Move to the front. Break it to start. Confirm your improvements. Be coming, be coming. Confirm your improvement. And if you have your own to redeem tonight, come here, put it in my hand. You have your own vow to redeem tonight. Come here, put it in my hands. And let me lay hands on you and confirm grace. If you have your own to redeem this night, you can come with me here now. Let's receive it from you. Keep speaking in tongues as you drop it off.
may this encounter be more than practical in your life. Yeah. Bible says when Solomon awoke from his sleep, he didn't know he was actually dreaming because the encounter was too real and there was visible manifestation. What you have received tonight is called the substance of the Spirit. May this substance produce in your life. Yeah. I guarantee you, with this prophetic voice, prophetic unction, is already settled forever. Yeah. Rise and take your place. Yeah. Rise and take your place. Yeah. The unction, the anointing in the house has changed your level. Yeah. Now occupy your place. Every battle is neutralized. Amen. Go in the strength of the Lord. Amen. Your spirit man is sensitive. Amen. As you sleep, you will receive divine visitation. Amen. You will have encounters with heaven. Amen. God will give you clarity and direction. Amen. Your adversaries will be under divine pressure. Amen. We've received a serious revelation. Cyrus Darius. The gates that no man could open, God opened without a fight. I decry this North and South America will bow before you without a struggle. In the name of Jesus. May everything God has raised this ministry to represent in this generation become your personal possession and inheritance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sleep well. Amen. Wake up strong. Amen. As you come here tomorrow, you come in with testimonies. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen.